to our new video podcast. Uh, we're calling it the Thrash Cast. We're three guys who love talking all things thrash metal. Uh, given our ages, uh, all three of us grew up in, I guess, what we'll call the golden era of thrash metal uh, through the 80s. But um we also closely follow all the newer uh, generations of thrash bands. Uh, we'll do a formal introduction in a moment, uh, but just uh, start with a bit of a high level background. Uh, so Jim, Ken and I, my name is Billy. Uh, we work together over at the Metal Pit website uh, and we sort of got into a routine doing uh, some uh, thrash metal uh, podcast together. Um, and so the reason why we're here uh, on this new uh, website we enjoyed working together uh, and wanted to take it one step further uh, and create a dedicated thrash uh, metal podcast. Um, so probably now is a good time, I think, to to introduce ourselves, let everyone get to know us a little better. Uh, Ken, do you want to sort of kick off and, and give a bit of a bio for everyone? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I'm Ken, uh, Ken Galant. Um, I've been doing this for a long, long, long time. Yeah. So Horror Metal Sounds is my website. So what I'm doing is I my site's basically devoted to horror and metal, the two worlds which I closely love and associate growing up with. So I thought that would be a great thing to do. Um, I started this site like about 11 years ago. So it's been quite a while. It actually started as, as, a, um, as a column on another site that's no longer active. So I worked there. Um, and then basically, a long story short, I got into a little bit of a tiff with the editor of that site. So I decided to basically just go strike out on my own and do my own thing. So yeah, Horror Metal Sounds has been around for 11 years. We've been covering horror, metal, and you know we're still going strong. We're now in year number 11. And uh, yeah, this is great with this new venture. I love it. Always talking thrash is a big thing for me. Cool. And I'm, and I'm guessing you like thrash. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You betcha. Grew up with that right from the beginning. So cool. Uh, Jim, how about you? Yeah, I'm Jim Harrison. Uh, I'm from the East Coast here in Nova Scotia, Canada. And, uh, you know, what's great about it is, uh, I mean, I'm the same age as you guys, 53 years old. So grew up right at the birth of thrash. Um, one of my favorite uh, sub metal genres for sure, that and death metal. And the chance to talk about thrash continuously is just, it's really, really awesome. I mean, uh, you know, fell in love with it in the early 80s and haven't looked back. And I've been working with the Metal Pit as a writer, uh, doing lots of album reviews and podcasts and stuff. And, uh, but this is going to be great to really just kind of hone in on my thrash addiction. So. <laughs> That's a good addiction to have. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, so I introduced myself earlier. My name's uh, Billy. Uh, and a little, uh, Jim, with you uh, giving us your age, I might be the young one in the group. Ah. Uh, but, but, but maybe barely by a year. Uh, <laughs> But uh, I, I think all three of us are, are sort of uh, here in Canada um, and so currently living in Canada, although I did spend uh, much of the past decade living in the States, uh, Philadelphia. So that's uh, another great uh, heavy metal city. Uh, I got into metal probably when I was like 12 or 13. Um I guess I'll use the term metal kind of loosely, metal, hard rock, uh, whatever I can get my hands on that was uh, faster than the pop music. Uh, fast forward to, de to uh, today, uh, I'd say my, my favorite uh, metal genres are thrash, uh, so I'm in the right place here, uh, but also a big, uh, big fan of death metal. Uh, I actually like all forms of uh, metal. Mm -hmm. Uh, with the exception of black metal. So sorry, uh, black metal fans, just something I've <laughs> never been able to to break through. Um, you know, a little bit more about me. You know, I have a passion for live heavy metal uh, as much as I love listening to it. Um, uh, listening to it live is even better. Uh, I tend to sort of go to at least one big Euro <laughs> metal fest a year, uh, a couple of local shows a month, um, and then multiple Multiple festivals uh, in the uh, North American uh, area. Um, so, yeah, big fan of that. Uh, in terms of physical media, I think a lot of us are the same. Uh, I need to have that physical copy so you can see behind me. <laughs> 
Uh, or beside yeah. me, I've got lots of CDs and vinyl, not a big digital guy. Um, and then lastly, as Jim mentioned, uh, I also uh, contribute album and concert reviews. Uh, and I've been doing a few interviews over at the metalpit.com as well. Um, so yeah, that that's, uh, the, that's a little bit more about the three of us. Um, so then let's move into the logistics uh, uh, of the uh, of the new uh, thrash cast here. So our plan is to to do this weekly. Uh, now I'm sure life will get in the way. So uh, there may be uh, a <laughs> guarantee it's going to be every single week uh, in terms of focus. Uh, you know, as we've been talking about, definitely thrash metal uh, is the focus. But we may I guess we'll open, we'll keep it open, could jump into other styles from time to time um and then most importantly where you can find the podcast uh so ken talked about it already we're going to house it on his website so www.horrormetalsounds.com um and then of course the uh, youtube page um where where you'll be able to uh, get a copy of the videos uh horror metal sounds at ken g.2864 uh ken do, did i get all that right you did, sir. You did just All right. fine. All right, cool. <laughs> uh, and I know you, you you talked a bit about the site. Uh, you probably covered it, but anything else you, you'd want to add here? Uh, no, no, just uh, we're very excited about getting this going. Uh, you'll see uh, us on promoting very, very soon. We have a logo that we designed for it, so we're, yeah, it's going to cool. be kick-ass. We'll have T-shirts. Oh, yeah. We can, we'll be having T-shirts for it because I, I had that in mind. Since I'm all about like with my side, I like to I like to do the branding. So we branded horror metal sounds in a kind of a unique way because I'm a visual person. I'm also like a, a graphic artist. I mean, I went to art school, so I've always had that in mind. So this so this podcast will be very visual from time to time, and I just hope everyone tunes in every every week to talk to hear us talk about black. <laughs> Cool. And then let's hope those uh, T-shirt sizes are size inclusive. Uh, I don't wear a small or a medium, by the way. And, and no. no European sizes. I've been burned on that uh, at the Euro festivals. Yeah. <laughs> uh, an extra large is is, uh, is like our medium here. So. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So. Uh, today's topic why are we here so we're going to talk about the legendary german thrash metal band creator uh we're going to do a deep dive on the influential influential uh pleasure to kill album uh that was 1986 <clears throat> it came out do i have that right guys 1986 yep, yep. you got yeah. it um and then after we do a deep dive on the album we're going to uh uh reveal a bit of a painful task we had ranking the creator disc <laughs> <laughs> uh, so definitely some interesting uh, albums in there but but we'll save that um okay uh before we do the uh the deep dive into the creator discussion uh, one of the things we wanted to do on the podcast is just kind of share an album that we're spinning uh, and or a piece of like thrash metal news uh that caught our attention uh sure some of you may already be aware of that but if we could if we could share uh, uh some news uh to folks i think that's a good thing get the word out um so ken do you, do you want to start this segment yeah, sure. So um, recently I've been listening to the uh, new uh, A-Trophy album, which the band has returned back to a new album for the first time in like a long, long, long time. Yeah. So I did interview Brian uh, for uh, my site. So that was a really good interview. Um, it's a great album. It's a return to form album. Lots of heavy uh, riffs in it. I love the lyrics. R lyrical content is fantastic. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping everyone picks this album up when it. I think it's already out now. If I, if I have that right. Um, uh, no, I think probably this, this week. week. This yeah. Week? Okay. Yeah. Why do I think yeah. the 18th? Is that right, or is that a Friday? Yeah, mm, yeah I think so. Yeah, you. Yeah. No, the 15th is a Friday, is it not? Oh, maybe it's the 15th then. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. Okay, Friday. Yeah. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Um, I think everyone should go out and pick that album up. Um, if you like classic thrash. And if you remember these guys back from the 80s, they just kind of pick up where they left off. And it's it's fantastic. So I, that's my my pick for current spinning metal album okay. or crash album. 
Uh, anything else there? Is that, uh, that's what you got, Ken? That's for the yeah for that side for the one I'm spinning. I did want to bring up a couple of quick news. Uh, news yeah, 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 go ahead. Yeah, so there is a new Darkness <laughs> album coming out. Um, if anyone remembers Darkness, they're kind of one of the more they're German thrash, so it kind of fits well with our topic tonight. Uh, they, I, I don't wouldn't call them like, you know, maybe they're like a lower tier thrash band, but I've always liked their style. Uh, they have an album coming out on April 26th on, I believe it's Massacre Records. And uh, the new album is actually called Blood on Canvas. So I'm looking forward to that album. Um, they've been around, they've reformed in 2015. Uh, so they've been, I think they had, what, two like, two albums previously to this. So they would have had um, uh, The Gasoline Solution. And then they, there was the one they did, uh, with First Class Violence in 2018. Mm. So they're continuing on. Uh, new vocalists. There are new members in the band. The only returning members is the drummer and guitarist from back, like, mid-80s. So that's an album that I'm looking forward to that's coming out. Hmm. I can't say uh, I'm familiar with that band. Do, do you know them, Jim, or is it just me? No, I'm not. I'm not totally familiar with them either. No. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah, I looked them up. They have um, they had three albums previously. They started out uh, 87, 88, 89, and then they called it quits. Like as most trash bands of that of that era, like in the early 90s, they disappeared and then returned. But um, definitely check them out. Like the first album is really good. Okay. Cool. Well, uh, Jim, we got some homework already. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right, Jim, do you want to uh, take over? So a really, really anticipated release coming up with Hyrax returning. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, they have a new single out that was, I think, released about a month ago, Drill Into the Brain. So, I mean, it's just... It's it just sounds like classic Hyrax, and I mean, there's all kinds of interviews uh, that Katon's been doing, and on top of that, I think they just they just played, they just opened for Prong and Voivod, and I think in California the week just last night, so that's pretty cool. And their new album, Faster Than Death, is coming out. I don't think there's a release date yet on that, but I mean. I've been a fan since Raging Violence, yeah. uh, you know, and then yeah. they obviously kind of. You know, they had 85, 86, then kind of disbanded, got back together in 04, and then kind of, you know, and, and Katon has been working in, uh, I think he's been working in a record store. And then just from, I saw an interview with him where he was saying him and his wife were just going through the stacks and stacks of fan mail that he still gets, that they just decided, you know what, we need to, we need to bring this to the masses again. So that, that'll be a great release and uh, something definitely to look forward to. I can't wait. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Do you, any sense, Jim? Like, uh, how much of the old band is back, or not? I I couldn't find any information. I know. I, I think there's one other member, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, okay. You know, I the interviews have just been kind of him at a few. Like he's been. They've been playing live uh, over the past month. Uh, a couple shows here and there, and uh, like I say, it was really cool because. Uh, following him on instagram and on uh on youtube there and facebook he's always like he just they got he kind of got asked they got asked to do the voivod show which was you know a pretty big deal for them so that that's pretty cool but yeah i'm not 100 percent sure on the other members yet okay all right uh that should be good uh yeah yeah uh, to be honest i wasn't aware of that one either so there you go <laughs> <laughs> i'm learning a lot and uh, that's all i've got that's all i've got for new news Okay. That no, that's cool. cool. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, so on my end, uh, I got a piece of news and I have uh, uh, something I've been spinning. Um, so just showing this uh, album here, I uh, picked up a recent uh, reissue, uh, Infernal Majesty, None Shall Defy, uh, released in 1987. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, but Canadian uh, thrash band. Um you know, definitely rooted in uh, thrash metal. Uh, as I've been spinning it this week, it still holds up well uh, here in 2024. So so uh, I think that says something right there. Um, it's actually, you know, uh, if I compare it to stuff at the time, like it's evil sounding, you know, kind of in the vein of like a Slayer or Possessed. Uh, musicianship is pretty strong. Uh, had some early uh, technical... Um, 
you know, maybe progressive elements. Like the bass is uh, very uh, upfront in the mix, uh, like a technical band, and you know some of the you know the the time changes are are a little different uh, than you'd expect. There's some slow intros, slow endings, um, so a pretty cool thing. You know the the production's pretty raw, uh, but I guess 1987 uh, in a small Canadian band with, with very little dollars to record. So uh, yeah. keep that in mind, but still think it's a, a very strong album. Like it might very well be uh, like a bit of a cult album. It seems quite popular. Uh, Jim, Ken, uh, you guys like this album as well? Oh, yeah, I had this album. This album yeah. is really good. Um, yeah, yeah. I, think, I think not from Montreal. I thought they were quote from Quebec. I, I, I thought it was Vancouver. Vancouver. Okay, I could be wrong. Yeah. I For some reason... For some reason, I had Montreal in my mind, but it could, yeah, it could yeah, very well yeah. be Vancouver. Okay. Yeah, I think it's Vancouver. Uh, but then in terms of new piece, speaking of uh, Quebec, uh, okay. so one of my favorite bands and and a band I grew up with in the, uh, well, I started buying their demos uh probably in the later 80s, seeing them live in Montreal. Um, but the band, uh, Canadian Technical Thrash Metal, uh, Oblivion, uh, and I guess note the spelling, it's uh, E-O-N, uh, so it's a bit unique, but uh, like I said, really uh, technic uh, you know, technical thrash uh, metal, uh, this particular album, th they were definitely uh, you know, well ahead of the group in, in terms of mm -hmm technicality and just really good songwriting uh it got like rave reviews all over the world really i remember buying the magazines back in like 88 89 and reviewing the demo uh which has all these songs and the thing was getting like four out of five five out of five everywhere but you know as we know sometimes bands just don't you know they can't break out for whatever reason uh but the uh the big news uh related to this you know some if you had these things on vinyl they were going for 100 200 bucks each mm -hmm. um this one's actually an original copy uh that i bought back in the day uh but uh flogger records uh out of greece who do great reissues uh have just reissued the whole catalog uh and so that's already out there like i've been i've seen them here in canada um so you could definitely find them uh you know you got this album from this day forward 1990 uh you know really more progressive thrash um, I would just sort of point to this other classic, uh, Nemesis. This was uh, a little heavier, uh, maybe sort of verging on death metal, but still thrash uh, and definitely more technical. Um, then the other two, uh, you know, they changed their style, uh, changed the singer. So they were a little different. Cyber Void uh, from uh, 1995, uh, and then Carnivore Mother Mouth from 1990. Um, so again, you can get all those on vinyl. Um, but the other surprise is, uh, I don't know if it was meant to happen at the same time, but Awakening Records, who do awesome CD reissues uh, with all the stories and great notes and interviews with the band, uh, are reissuing the whole catalog on CD. Uh, they're not out just yet. They, if you look at Awakening Records, they keep saying coming soon in 2024. Uh, but it's <laughs> It's a bonus material that's not on the vinyl. Um, so so I can't wait to get my hands on those. I have them on CD, but I don't have those uh, damn uh, <laughs> bonus tracks. So I, again, I can't recommend, you know, unfortunately they're they're probably not, you know, uh, you know, as as they're definitely not as well known as they should be, but I can't recommend enough from this day forward and nemesis, just two mm -hmm. classic uh albums that, that's gotta be heard. Um so yeah, that, that's what I had for uh, our news uh, segment. Uh, sure. Anything else you guys want to share? Or? You know, Billy, it was funny because you had brought that up on one of our past yeah. podcasts, and I've been I've been listening to them digitally. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they're wicked, wicked band. And I mean, I I wasn't familiar with them at first. I think as soon as I kind of checked out their logo and saw the album covers, I do remember them. But man, you're <laughs> right, and I. I'm watching diligently for the re-releases. That's going to be cool. Yeah, I know. That'll be cool. <laughs> yeah. And, and like, I, I wish I still had it, but uh, like, I remember 
as a young kid in Montreal, uh, you know, well before the internet, obviously we're showing our age, uh, <laughs> but actually writing to the band and asking yeah. for like a demo cool. copy. Uh, nice. Then they sent me, you know, snail mail, uh, a demo uh, copy <laughs> uh, on CD. Nice. And so, uh, yeah, that's a pretty cool experience. Uh, I was a local, you know, a pretty much a local band for me. So that might be why I'm, I'm so passionate uh, about them. Um, yeah, that's all right. Anyways. Hey, tape, uh, tape trading. You're like the Lar you're like the Lars of the North. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh I, I don't think I, I went out against Napster though. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> uh I, actually I never used Napster because at the end of the day I had to have the, the physical copy. It's the curse that I have. Same here. The financial yeah. curse. Yeah. Wow. Well. Uh, okay. So, uh, so yeah, that's a little segment that we'll uh, start off with, uh, with with each uh, with each show. Uh, but let's move into the uh, the the body of our podcast here. So, creator, um, I think I'll just sort of uh, you know uh, give a bit of an overview. I mean, not that people don't know creator, but uh, there might be some younger fans. Um, so, creator are you know a German band, uh, part of the uh, the 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 big four of uh, German Teutonic Thrash Metal, along with uh, Sodom, Destruction, and Tankard. Uh, they first formed in 1982. Uh, one thing I didn't know is they went through multiple names. Uh, they were at one point called Metal Militia, Tyrant. Yeah. I did know about Tormentor, uh, yeah. but then eventually landed on Creator in 1984, 85. Uh, the main guy in Creator, of course, is Millie Petroza uh, on guitars and vocals. Um, but of course, the uh, the drumming god Ventnor, uh, mm -hmm. you know, was with the band most of the time. He stepped out for for a brief period, uh, but you know, back in the uh, band. But then, you know, the other band member certainly was a bit of a uh, a revolving door going on there. Um, pretty prolific output, I'd say. 15 studio albums, multiple EPs, and I just gave up buying all the live albums because it feels like there's one yeah. there's uh, every year or every mm. year. This is yeah, getting yeah. crazy. Uh, first record, of course, Endless Pain in 1985. Uh, latest is uh, Hey Uber Alice. Uh, that was in uh, 2022. Um, and then, you know, really creator just, uh, I think, uh, definitely of the German big four, achieved the most international success. Uh, and really, the band's still touring on a regular basis uh, and across the world. I mean, I saw them three times last year. Uh, I didn't have to Ooh. go that far out of the way to do it. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, the, the band's still uh, going strong. Um, anything I missed, guys, that, that you'd add in there? Uh, no, it was good. Uh, I will say that. Don't forget, they were a trio. They weren't actually a four-piece yeah. when they started out. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they were technically a trio. And even though the, the fourth member that that's actually credited on the album for pleasure to kill isn't wasn't really in the band he i know he did some work with the guys but yeah would, they were technically a trio for quite a while so i thought that was an interesting point yeah yeah and i think i think the first pressings of pleasure to kill had him listed as a yeah. member and it, then right. they corrected it yeah as they went on yeah yeah so it's yeah. kind of weird so they were a three-piece for the most part so that's kind of like more going into um destruction territory because they were yeah. three -piece as well so yeah. Kind of interesting. Yeah. And Sodom has been a three piece a lot of their career. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. So it's funny, like they can get, get by with like three members for each of those bands. Yeah, I know. And it was interesting, like just uh, last week, not thrash metal, but I saw the German band Rage. Uh, and and they're 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 now been going as a three piece for a while. <laughs> Must be yeah. something about the German bands. Yeah, yeah maybe. <laughs> All right. Never know. Uh, okay, so then let's uh, let's just chat a bit about kind of our, our general uh, thoughts on Creator uh, and the impact they they've had on our own personal uh, metal uh, journey, if you will. Um, Jim, uh, can, can you uh, share uh, your thoughts on Creator? Oh man, I mean, the, you know, you've got the Teutonic Big Four here, so you know, you've got Creator, you've got Sodom, you've got Destruction, uh, Destruction, you've got uh, 
uh, Tankard. So, I mean, you know, this the first time I heard them was probably this album, but the first album I actually purchased was Extreme Aggression. And I mean, that was just one, that's one hell of an album. So uh, I have a lot of like attachment to it. You know, it came out in, right at the end of the of the 80s and it absolutely just kicked ass. So, and then going back and like getting Endless Pain and uh, Terrible Certainty and that, um, you know, they're a solid, solid, consistent band. Um, what you what you hear and what you see is what you're going to get. What I like about their last release of Hate Uber Alice was, and it was one of my top albums. I think it was my third top next to Voivod and Saxon album that of 2022. Mm-hmm. Um, I like the fact that they tweak they tweak their sound a little bit on that. You know, you've got some they bring in like a you know a female singer for one of the songs and. I, there was a lot of kind of there was a little bit of pushback from maybe some hardcore creator fans online, but I think overall people like the tweaking change a little bit. And this is what falls into like kind of I, I remember I've talked about it a lot of times that I what I really like about creator they 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 tweak it, but they don't do a, a like a one eighty change like maybe somebody like Metallica did and and really kind of alienated a ton of their fans. These guys don't and you know maybe there's a couple albums in there that uh, like <laughs> renewal renewals a little ch- a bit of a change and, yeah. and maybe a, a little bit of a tough pill to swallow but you know i find they're generally pretty consistent and that's what i like in my thrash metal i like consistency love like anthrax is consistent slayer sodom you know tankard you, you, this is all good consistent stuff so yeah yeah no good point um yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, the, the late '90s is definitely an interesting period for yeah. culture, but we'll get into that <laughs> when we get to that. I'm, I, I have some pretty strong feelings on that, but uh, uh, Ken, okay. uh, yeah, Ken, same question to you. Yeah, well, like Jim, I would have heard them from "Pleasure to Kill," the second album. Um, that's one of the first album I actually heard. Um, so yeah, I've kind of knew about them right from the get-go because they're you know they're always written in magazines of the time, and so I knew of them. Um, I always kind of I, I knew them right from the start. But when I was in high school, my I had a bunch of buddies who were like totally into metal, and they were like bringing in uh, vinyl records of Destruction, Eternal yeah. Devastation. So that was like, oh, it's so great. And then they were like, hey, how about Creator? And I'm like, oh, okay. So my buddies were talking about Creator. So yeah, I started getting into them as well because I thought, you know, well, Destruction, Creator, like, how could you not? Like, these album yeah. covers and these these bands, <laughs> like, they just, they get you right from the get-go. And it's like, that cover, like, even Endless Pain, like, that cover is just, oh, I love that cover. So yeah, that's that was kind of like my first, my first introduction to Creator as well. Um, I think we're probably all going to have different opinions about their career, um, overall, though, I think their career has been interesting. There's been a lot of ups and downs, yep. and I also and I also feel like the second, the more modern approach to creator very much is owed to the, the experimentation that they did make in the mid '90s. Because a lot of that melody, or at least some of the melody that they were introducing, some of those albums, it really it really creeps into the the modern sound, and they're not as aggressive and as angry as they were. So I kind of like the balance with this band, and I, well, I'm sure we'll talk more about the the later period creator. But okay. um, you know, every album every album is different, but every album is still consistent in a lot of ways. Yeah, no, that's that's an interesting point. I, I definitely find the you know the last sort of uh, four or five albums definitely have uh, you know a little bit more melodic. But that's yeah. interesting. I never connected it to that messy uh, '90s period, <laughs> but uh, I can see what you're saying. No, I I, I can see that. Just the experimentation, like Millie's yeah. his his willingness to experiment, like to leave the yeah. the thrash formula and try something else. I mean, you have Endorama. I mean, that's as far far away from a mm. thrash album as you can imagine. But what I'm saying is, like elements of Endorama, some of the, some of that melody. It yeah, creeps into the modern yeah. sound. It really yeah. you can hear it in the modern sound so yeah, much. I so I so I kind of think like, yeah, you, you know, he's as a musician, he's 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 really clever with, with the style and the sound yeah. and pushing it. And I like it because you can't you can't like have every album sound like endless pain, because that's gonna no. bore you to death after a while. 
you know? Yeah. yeah. No, I got you. No, no, that's well said. No, I like that. Um, yeah, I guess from, from my perspective, that, that same question, uh, you know, 1986 is, you know, had a major influence on, uh, on, on my metal journey. Uh, and this is really where I kind of discovered creator. If I, if I'm remembering right, uh, it was the, uh, pleasure to kill album, but things like pleasure to kill and slayers rain in blood, <laughs> Uh, they were just such transitional albums for me because I was listening to, you know, like, uh, you know, hard rock music, Twisted Sister and uh, Aerosmith and Van Halen and all great, great music, I guess. Uh, but like it was this year where a switch uh, flicked uh, and I just started moving into the thrash, the heavy stuff, uh, then from thrash to death metal. Um, so, yeah, just such an influential uh, album on, uh, on on my metal journey for sure. And uh, yeah, I've been a, a big fan ever since, um, you know, still followed them during, you know, the, those albums that I'm sure we'll mm -hmm. talk about uh, in the 90s. Um, and, and I still look forward to a new creator album. I'll pre-order it yeah. to this day. Um, and, and, you know, I think I mentioned yeah. seeing them frequently live. So um, yeah, no, lots to like here. Yeah. Um, Okay. Uh, and then just, we talked about the big four a couple times. Uh, just curious. Uh, I wanted to get your take on sort of where you think creator sits within the big four. So uh, hopefully I'm not putting you on the spot, but yeah. I'm going to ask you to rank your, your favorites <laughs> uh, in the big four, uh, one, two, three, and four. Okay. So, oh, okay. So I'll go. So creator's <laughs> number one. Destruction is number two. Sodom number three and Tanker number four. That's how okay. I've always look, looked at those four bands. Okay, Jim. Yeah, today, creator <laughs> yeah, today I like Sodom. <laughs> <laughs> today, creator Sodom, destruction, and Tankard. Unfortunately, ta you know, and Tankard's a great band. I have a lot of their stuff, but it's just probably not as prolific as uh, as the other three. But you know, that that would be my list. So Jim, okay. you think destruction number you're putting destruction that low? You're not yeah you're not number three. Or? Oh no, I'm okay. totally into them. Love the oh, latest okay. album. I was just curious. Oh okay. yeah, just like today. <laughs> I just yeah, no, you know I... Sodom had a you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I so so I, I I'll give you my ranking and <laughs> I've got destruction third as well. Uh I actually love all these four bands. I mean okay. from my perspective, I I uh I think from an entire discography career perspective, I, I, I think I'll say I prefer the big four over the uh, the German big four uh over the US big four. Now that may okay. be blasphemy, I don't know. Uh <laughs> but that's how much I like these four bands. Um, but for me, I'm gonna go Sodom by a hair. Uh, Ooh, okay. uh yeah. Uh, and then creator, then destruction, and then tanker. Uh, but it's so hard. Um, but yeah, just just something about uh a Sodom always uh connected with me slightly more. Um, okay. but anyways. Um okay, cool. Um so yeah, so I think we'll uh, dive into the uh, the album and specific tracks, uh, or maybe just <laughs> just before we do that, uh, Ken, you mentioned the artwork, uh, and yeah, the first two albums, uh, just incredible artwork. Um, any who is the artist on that? Uh, any idea? Uh, it's uh, Philip uh, La Lavier is the artist. He's an American. I think he's an American artist, and believe it or not, um, he's did many many. Um, album covers for bands. He worked with a lot of the Noise Records uh, during that period. He did like stuff for uh, Celtic Frost. Uh, he did stuff for Warrant, the the, the German Warrant band. Um, he's did stuff for Death Row, Rage. Um, yeah, he's a uh, Vendetta, Hyrax. He did a Hyrax cover as well. Nice. Okay. Um, he's also worked for uh, worked on Minotaur. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with Ex Mortis. They're more of a modern kind of yeah. death rash band. He's did at least three of their album covers. Okay. So he has yeah. a really extensive resume. And it's funny because all those bands, to some degree, have very similar ideas of the, you know, the whole, the whole fantasy elements and all the all the covers that he's done. If you look at them, which I was doing that earlier today, they all have like fantasy elements in it, like you know, 
beefy kind of uh, Frank Frazetta style warriors, swords, chains, like they, it's all kind of connected. So it's kind of funny that he's, uh, that he found this style. He's very similar to, um, I don't know if you guys know Chris Verwimp. He does a lot of death and a, a lot of death and trash uh, metal album covers. Very similar style, but but yeah, it's just funny. He's carved out a very, really good career with the with the German scene with all those German bands. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, I mean the uh, I mean I love all the the artwork, but yeah. I tend to not uh, be super knowledgeable on the artist. But I, I know you would know that. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I've connected with him on Facebook. He's a, he's actually a really nice guy, and I was. Oh, okay. uh, I've had a couple of chats with him about about his career and the stuff he's done. Yeah, he's an interesting fellow. He still works. Like he still he's like in his sixties now, but he's still actively working on uh, on metal and stuff. So okay, it's all good. Cool, cool. All right, so pleasure to kill. Uh, let's tackle the uh, the individual tracks here. Nine tracks in total. Uh, one's an instrumental, and and let's uh, let's start there. Uh, first track, Wire of the Damned. Uh, Ken, you want to kick us off? Yeah, I, I, and we've been saying this forever. On every time we get together on a podcast, it's like, oh, this is a, <laughs> a typical thrash album. With you get like a you get like this epic opening, instrumental opening, which is kind of cool. Yeah. I like the opening. It's very movie soundtrackish to me. It's got that. I'm almost like thinking about these really cheesy, like Beastmaster and those kind of '80s movies. I can <laughs> see that song coming up right away. And then, yeah, it's it's a great introduction, and then you get right into the first song. So I, I love it. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, no, for sure, uh, Jim. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's, cla- it's it's wicked. It's got that picks up, and it just sets this album up. And I love the fact. I love these old school thrash records where they usually start off with one. They're just kind of teeing it up for you. And I mean, and then you're heading into track two, which is just a total face melter, but yeah, I love it as well too. And uh, I think there's some kind of crow effects in there that sound pretty, yeah, pretty yes, gnarly. Yes. I, I really like that. It kind of, you know, it falls right into thrash and death. Some of the, you know, it just, it's just wicked. It gets, that's the tease it up for you. Yeah, yeah, you hear the wind kind of in the middle. You get yeah. wind blowing, and then the birds come in, uh, and then it kind of breaks into uh, a pretty melodic uh, uh, guitar passage. Yeah, um, yeah. See, so yeah, I mean, I think you guys said it all. Like, I do find it a bit interesting though, because like a lot of the albums where we talked about it, they, they were they were probably definitely much later uh, mm-hmm. than this album came out. <laughs> And this thing is just like, you know, tracks two to nine are just like <laughs> face melters, right? Like, yeah, like the, uh, you know, most of the other albums, there are some other like soft points and some counterbalances, <laughs> but this thing just kind of yeah. stands out, right? Like, I don't remember my first impression of when I heard it the first time, but it always kind of makes me smile when I think about, you know, some kids got this, you know, buys it for the first time. <laughs> Look at this album cover. Whoa, this thing's called Pleasure <laughs> to Kill. And then it's like soft like guitar. It's like, what the hell is going on here? But you find you know, pretty quick, like a minute and a half, uh, what this album's about. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so speaking of uh face melting, uh ripping corpse, uh, <laughs> track number two. Oh. Jim, over to you. Oh, I mean, this is just this is the classic old school thrash classic i love it and it has kind of a venom meets flair and this whole album is kind of like that it's kind of like really you know early venom meets kind of really early slayer and but it, it's just it's so fast and I, i've got written down in my notes like just an absolute drum explosion it's just it just grabs you by the throat and doesn't let go and i like the fact that it tees this song up and then you know, and you hit it on the head when you said, like, you imagine some kid coming home with, like, you know, this on cassette or on album, which would have been <laughs> on vinyl, and, like, some mother seeing it and, like, what the hell is this called? Pleasure to Kill. But then the kid putting it on, and then, <laughs> like you say, starts off with this kind of melodic intro, like, what the heck is this? And then, boom, then, you know, you've been kicked right in the you-know-what. So, you know, it, it just sets it totally, totally up. I love the song. 
Yeah, no. Yeah, I, I think it's great. Uh, I, I, for me, it's just like raw aggression. It's relentless. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of the the songs and the leads are a bit of like chaotic, like it's uh, <laughs> pretty crazy, but it all works. Uh, I think even Millie, right, like vocals on a lot of this albums, like he's sort of entering into. I mean, this is you know precedes some of that, but there's some early like death and black metal type. Uh, yeah. Uh, screams and uh, type vocals. I mean, I'm sure he was influenced partly by Celtic Frost, uh, you know, uh, around this period and, and with their previous uh, Endless Pain. But, and again, like these, these guitar leads, they're just blistering all over the place. Yeah. Like Jim, you mentioned the drumming. It just never lets up. Like it's as fast as any of the, the big four we're doing, as far as I'm concerned at this time, the, the U.S. Uh, big four. Um, so, yeah, just a perfect blueprint for brutal thrash, right? Not melodic thrash, but <laughs> brutal thrash. Um, so, yeah, great track. Uh, and then, Ken, your thoughts? Yeah, it's it's pretty much like a proto, proto death sound. I mean, I was yeah. reading... A lot of people were considering considering them to be almost like the place where maybe it sort of starts to become death metal. It's not, yeah. but I mean, just just the the nasty approach. And then this song in particular, like the lyrics are really nasty. Like the things he's saying in it, when you think about it, like this dark figure coming from the east. Now, whoever that could be, it could be anyone with an axe, with 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 a weapons, and just laying waste to people because he he does state in this like. You start. You die by the blade. You have. You wait. The uh, the axe in your back. Uh, you know the dying, eating, eating the heart of your wife, killing children. Like that's just some nasty stuff when you think about it. But yeah. but it goes it goes with the territory, right? Like the guy, he has an attitude. And I I also what what I find funny for for me is that uh, he, I love his singing, but he you can tell at times he's just trying to get the words out. So there's no like really like synchronicity with the music it's just it's just i'm spinning them out spinning them out so it's great so it's like it's unheard of for thrash bands because the americans would never ever have this kind of style of thrash because i think in like if you look at megadeth and, and um, metallica both vocalists very much you you know that they're singing and, and they pride themselves on the singing millie just like i don't care i'm just going to sit up here and i'm just going to scream it spit it out it's <laughs> insane it's just absolutely insane but that's what makes it makes it so Unique. like hair raising to some degree because it's like wow i don't think i i don't think any any of the american bands could ever play that kind of style never ever yeah no it makes sense um okay third track death is your savior <laughs> i have a feeling we're going to be talking more of the same <laughs> uh but Ooh. ken over to you <laughs> yeah this, this song this song will just pummel you like it, it's just vicious and like lyrics wise you know, again, like he just spits it all out and like themes of power, there's themes of control, the idea of the destruct destructive nature of war. And like the song has this pivotal kind of war god figure who basically rules with an iron fist of the land. So it's just a nasty, nasty track. I love this track. It's like the <laughs> riffs are razor sharp. Um, it's just unrelenting. And yeah, it's, it's a great song all the way through for me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jim? Yeah, no, those heavy guitar riffs. And I like, you know, and Ventnor sings on this. That's one of the three songs that he vocal, he's vocals on, uh, this one and a couple of others. So you kind of, there is a little bit of a difference there, uh, definitely. But, mm -hmm. I mean, again, a massive drum sound. It's got a really cool solo in it. But it is, again, like you guys said, kind of chaotic. And I, that's what I like about it. I think that's that's what, like you were saying about the American thrash, it's a little bit more kind of organized where it's here yeah. it is here. It's, it's kind of laid out. This is a little bit more, you kind of don't know what direction it's going to go in, but yeah, this is definitely another massive song on the album. Absolutely love it. Yeah. I, I just sort of, I, I jotted down two, uh, two points here. Uh, I think the first, uh, it, it just madness and energetic. <laughs> 
uh come to mind like the, it gets even more intense as the song progresses and the drumming right like ken you said it the the pummeling drums here like yeah again just another relentless track um yeah and then just the raw vocals right yeah obviously it wouldn't have worked with clean singing with this music <laughs> no. uh, yeah no another uh another killer track um and, and so this will be a common theme of the night i'm sure uh yeah. so moving on to uh, uh track number four pleasure to kill uh jim yeah this it's got a wicked drum info uh, intro and again it's so heavy this is one of my couple of like i have a few standout favorites this is one of them uh you know i I love the distorted kind of satanic voice that kind of sounds like a demon towards, I think it's towards the end of the track, but it, yeah. it really suits it. Uh, this is, uh, you know, the title, it's just awesome. And I mean, it just flows really good again too. This is like Slayer meets Venom and they come out, they have a baby and it's creator. That's how it feels like early, early Slayer venom and you know if they were to get together and produce something you know it's just it, it sounds so so cool i mean and it's it's so heavy and again i mean you know uh you're, you're heading to like uh almost the end of the first side of the album and it's just getting it seems like it's getting heavier and heavier as the album goes on yeah i know yeah it definitely does hey eh? <laughs> Um, yeah, maybe I'll jump in uh, on this one before Ken jumps in. Uh, so for me, this sort of kicks off uh, what I think is like three the the run of the three best songs yeah. uh, on the album. Yeah. Right? They're they're just like classics. Um, also, pleasure to kill. Like the songs ingrained in me from all the the live shows I've seen with Creator. Uh, this is usually sitting somewhere uh, in the uh, encore. Uh, of course, along with Flag of Hate from uh, from the first album, uh, are pretty much standards. But yeah, I mean the pleasure to kill, and then the audience shouting it back. It, always a good time. Um, you know, the chorus is actually pretty memorable here, uh, just because it's you know dare. I say sing along <laughs> for this like, <laughs> crazy music, but uh, you know, it's it just a vicious guitar leads. They're fantastic. Uh, and really like when I listen to this thing, like really closely in the drums, you know, there's some really great drum fills uh, on this track that stand out here. Uh, not just aggressive drumming, but some interesting drumming here. Um, you know, it, it, we're actually getting for the, you know, unlike the, for the previous two songs, it's slow slows down for a period right so you know it makes the heavier stuff like more impactful i think that's pretty cool like you know millie just sounds downright oh yeah this track uh, <laughs> so uh yeah i love it um big fan uh ken what are your thoughts well this is like a really dark and morbid song first of all and it like it leans into the macabre <laughs> so much um what i think though is going on here is that you know like lyrically we're as I was looking at the lyrics, it's basically this undead vampire creature who comes back from the grave and basically wants to kill. So the chorus is what I think makes this song work because the chorus reflects what this is about, the pleasure to kill. Mm -hmm. And it's basic, but it's nasty. Again, it's like a really, really nasty song. And I'm going to read this quote to you guys because I got this off the internet and I thought it was funny. This is the quote. Pleasure, pleasure to Kill isn't just a song. It's a savage symphony that taps into our primal fears and fascination with the macabre. I, th I thought, damn, you got it. You nailed it. Because every song is like that. But mm. this is a great, great song. And I can see what you're saying, Billy, about when you see, when you hear it live. And yeah. like, it's, I don't know if it was meant to be a, a, like, uh, like a sing-along court, like a sing-along during the yeah, live probably not. <laughs> but, but what I, what my note, but the one thing I wanted to bring, to bring here, to bring you up here is that all the songs are structured similarly. So they introduce a, a figure or an idea and they use the chorus to emphasize what the song's about. And I've noticed it's a pattern in all the songs. So yeah. I think he was very conscious of doing that when he was writing this. I mean, maybe that's a primitive way to write a song, but I don't know. For me, it's really effective. And you remember it. Like, when I hear this album, if I'm just walking down the street and I'm thinking about music, Pleasure to Kill always comes to mind because it's like Pleasure to Kill. You just, it's in your head. Like, you, you, yeah, it's like, it's such a brilliant Near song. Near one. 
Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. You're the one, perfect. <laughs> exactly. You just don't forget it. Yep. No, exactly. Uh, and Ken, you're usually you know pretty up to speed on this stuff. Like I was reading this uh, older interview, uh, and it appeared to be Millie who was saying this, but he's saying the you know the whole uh, concept for pleasure to kill in the album title uh, came from him watching uh, a movie called Faces yep. of Death. Faces of Death, yes. Yeah, and oh. there was a section where he was watching like you know animals killing other animals, and you know, <laughs> and that triggered in his brain right away uh pleasure to kill watching the uh, animals doing it um yeah. and then that led to you know the the intentional uh approach to make like every track being about a, a different way to to die basically yeah that's funny because that um that movie came out in 1978 so for years it had okay. this it, it had this like it had this kind of um myth about it that oh they really did all these killings and they like it's all live recording of people being murdered and showing animals and all kinds of gross stuff. But apparently it's not. It's it's just a mock documentary that sort of pawns itself off as being like this. Um I, I know I, I know a lot about this because when I was a when I was a teenager, I I heard so much about it like in Fangoria magazine. I I, I had to I had to see this. So I it's funny that he actually decided to take that VHS tape. And then turn it in, it's like basically say that all our songs in this album are are inspired from that, from that uh, movie. It's a legend, <laughs> it's, it's not a great movie now, but <laughs> when I saw it back then, I was blown away by it. But watching it now, it's like, oh yeah, this is kind of, it's all right, it's funny. But uh, yeah, it's that's a great point that you brought up, of, of that he, because um, I wasn't aware of that either. I didn't know that he, uh, that that, you know, Faces of Death inspired him to write Pleasure to Kill. But it's interesting that you know you brought it up. Okay, cool. Yeah, I've never seen it. Like I wouldn't have thought uh something coming <laughs> up in 1978 uh would sort of spawn this like uh, brutal uh, album here, but uh, who knows. Well, it's got it's a it's like the VHS it's like it's not not legacy, but it's like um it's a legendary, I should say, in the sense that like it had this large myth about it like oh, being a whole one of those nasty, mm -hmm. like one of the the British video nasties, like you don't, you can't watch this kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. So I think I think it had that reputation for years. Yeah. Yeah, and I think just these young guys just wanted to be as you know gruesome as possible. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, to get that image out there, starting right. So yeah. Um, all right, cool. So that brings us to uh, the uh, fifth track, uh, "Riot of Violence." Uh, Ken, why don't you start with this one? Yeah, th this song I, I I like quite a bit. Like this is the first song that gets a little more melody into yeah. it, so they kind of pull back a little bit here, and I like it because it, it, the song actually is a little bit on the catchy side for me. Yeah. But um, I I like this song actually quite a bit. So like, again, um, it's painting this picture about society, about global collapse, about disease, and I I think it's fun. It's cool. And the thing is, I like the chorus again. The chorus what I think really brings it home, the uh, the whole kind of uh, the riot of violence. But when he's singing it, I had a, I was like, what what is he actually singing? Because it doesn't sound like riot, riot of violence because he's so fast at spitting it out. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, and but the accent. The well, yeah, and I think yeah, you're right. The accent has a a great a great part of um, mm -hmm. dealing with how you interpret the what you're hearing. But but yeah, it's a it's a great song. I for me, it's. Uh, one song has a lot more melody and I, I kind of like that you get a brief reproach or right? you get a beat or a brief respite at this point before you move into the next several songs where it's just insane again yeah <laughs> yeah no i know i think that I, I think i pretty much had uh, uh most of the same points here uh you know again this is a better example of uh the songwriting that'll come uh with the future albums uh where we do get you know you, you know a little bit more melody it's a little bit you know i had here the 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 main riff uh the main riffs are catchy as hell uh, you know there there's uh i love the rhythmic change ups in the song uh you know it just you know 
makes it more memorable, right? The yeah. slowing yeah. down for a period of time. Uh, you know, I think I said it about the previous track. Again, just makes the the faster parts even more uh, impactful for sure. Mm -hmm. And this is another like great live track, right? For the same reason. Uh, I mean, yeah, I've seen some pretty crazy, uh, vicious mo uh, mosh pits <laughs> during Riot of Violence. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a great song and another one of those where you know Millie will shout Riot of Violence and everyone shouts it right back. So. <laughs> Uh, another well-suited uh, uh, cool. song. Uh, and again, just more like great guitar work, right? Uh, some killer yeah. Uh, on this one. But um, yeah, let, let, from my perspective, uh, it, it's three in a row that, that are, are my absolute favorites. Mm -hmm. right? Pleasure to Kill, Riot, uh, Violence, and and uh, The Pestilence. But uh, before we get to Pestilence, Jim, do you want to jump in on Riot of Violence? Yeah, one of the one of my favorites on the album. I, again, yeah, this uh, you're leaving side one, and it's just. I mean, this I love the chorus in it as well too, and the the fast solo in it, the guitar solo is really good. I think this song probably structures a bit more than the previous songs, um, and it just creates that. I also too Ventnor's he's singing on this song. This is one of the ones he sings on, so that's kind of cool too. But I, I find. You know, it starts to take a little bit more of a more form uh, rather than the first few tracks. But yeah, pleasure to kill this and the next song are the best for me. The best songs on the album. But yeah, this is this is one of my number ones. Okay, so we're we're kind of the same on uh, yeah. On, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Um, so speaking of the next song, uh, <laughs> The Pestilence, and I find it interesting, like such a brutal album and, you know, relative to the uh, the previous songs, this thing's, uh, this thing's clocking in at seven minutes, yeah, right? Yeah. So it's, uh, uh, it's a pretty long, uh, pretty long track here. Uh, but Jim, do you want to uh, run with this one? Oh yeah. It's got more of a darker sound to it. I like that kind of the galloping drums and guitar, uh, you know, it just, it's, and it, that heavy solo again, I mean, this like is three of my three favorite songs, very similar to you guys. Uh, and it's just, I can't imagine this live because I mean, these three songs definitely bring down the house and, and yeah, it's just so cool. I mean, that galloping sound just gets that, that thrash sound, right through your body and i mean it's just it's awesome one of my one of my one a's one b's one c's but they could change throughout at any time it's a wicked wicked track yeah yeah no i uh yeah i agree and i think the first thing i jotted down here was those uh galloping <coughs> riffs as well so yeah uh, we're seeing that here and just the drumming just crushing yeah. it uh, again, the guitar leads, uh, you know, this is just like a great, like head banging song. I like the very end of it when it gets a little slower and doomy. Uh, that's yeah. kind of a, a cool way to, uh, to end the song and, and a little bit more here, like the previous two, there, there's a little bit, you know, tempo change, uh, within the song. So it's just not all, uh, rip your face <laughs> off here. So, uh, yeah, another great track. Uh, Ken, your thoughts? Yeah, I, I would agree with you guys. Like the the riff will just like slap you in the face. I also think the opening riff is really cool because it kind yeah. of it, it's a little bit slower, but then it basically sets up that chug right after, and it's yeah. like whoa. And then the engine revs up, and then you just go and you go and you go. Um, there's a couple things that I wanted to point out though is that I I wonder if this song was actually uh, inspired by the movie uh, Shivers by David Cronenberg. Because the, song, the lyrical content of the song is that it's about a parasitic force mm -hmm. that corrupts people's minds and gets them to, like, kill, murder, and do crazy things. And that's essentially what happens in, in the movie Shivers. So I thought, I thought that was kind of an interesting, like, horror film connection. I'm not sure if there is one, but that was my one kind of thought about it beyond that. I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. But as a song, I would, I would agree. This is, like, one of the strongest songs on the album. Seven minutes. It doesn't feel like seven minutes. No, no. yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, just, it just roars and it roars, and it's like, oh, this is great. And then when it stops, you're like, yeah, that's it. Oh, no more. Yeah. Like, yeah, it, it's it's such a great song. I I would agree with you guys. Like, it's basically the three one one of the best of the three songs on the album. Yeah, no, makes sense. Um, okay, cool. Uh, up next, uh, 
<clears throat> track number seven. Uh, I, I want to. I'm not sure if I'm. I'm fully got this right. Carry on. Uh, track. Uh, and I, I mean, I, I'm going to sort of uh, disclaim up front. I was asking the guys uh, how to pronounce <laughs> this uh, word, and it's not a word I used in the sentence yeah. <laughs> quite regularly. <laughs> uh, it's a bit of a something we did off camera before we started. But Candy, <laughs> you want to start on this one? Yeah. Now this is the whopper of the song for me, and I say that because lyrically, it's the nastiest trash song I've probably heard lyrics wise like just take this take this for a second here you know it sets the song sets up a, a dystopian society but then you get references to medi medieval brutality global conflict with death machines uh, the existence of Satan death zombies rising and bombs dropping now that's a whopper that's a lot of lyrics to, to like jam into a song and for me it's like whoa like, I don't know what Millie was on. I don't know if, um, <laughs> like, he had a pissed off day when they were writing it. But that is just one hell of a song. It's a whopper of a yeah. song for me. I love this song. Yeah. Uh, Jim? Yeah, I mean, using Carrion in a sentence, I, I you know, I, watching a, a documentary about alligators, alligators tend to like to eat rotting meat. So they kill something, they bring it down. They usually hide it in a pile of rocks or in a under a log, and as it starts to get ripe throughout the time, they feed from it, and that's that's where I I knew it from the 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 word. So, anyways, but yeah, ditto to what Ken said. I mean, my God, this thing's got some killer riff breaks in it, yeah. and uh, just awesome. It's got a really good groove to it for being an explosive song. I mean, yeah. and the drum intro is really good. I love the drums on this. Uh, this whole album's really, really showcased drums for thrash, and I think that that's cool. But yeah, no, this is another keeper for sure. Yeah, and no, I think you guys kind of uh, hit on it. Another sort of uh, uh, blasting track here <laughs> again. Uh, I, I, you know, I think it has a really cool opening riff. And, and right when you think the vocals are going to kick in, uh, you actually get like you know th this yeah. guitar lead that kicks in instead. Yeah. Uh, of the singing so so that's kind of cool that's a little different but again just you know another blistering song whether it be the rhythms uh the relentless riffing and drumming just all out intensity again uh, i don't think we need to say more on that yeah. um so speaking of which uh, number eight command of the blade uh jim you want to go here yeah this has got a cool guitar intro and this has probably got it's probably got the most identifiable identifiable bass sound on the album i think the song has got a really cool bass line to it and you know when he yells die i love it um you know again this is the third song that ventner sings on it so a little factoid there but no it's a, it's a, it's a great song i mean you're heading towards the end of the album and it is just not letting up it's just it keeps going keeps going so you know <laughs> yep yeah. uh ken yeah, I would agree. Like, I love the, the song is great too. It just falls in the same lyrical pattern of the idea of a this kind of nondescript metal warrior who basically is ad adept with his blade and just murders, slays, kills, and, <laughs> and the whole song just falls through. But uh, I think the chorus again. I like the chorus. I love for this album in particular. The chorus on all the songs seems to accentuate yeah. the idea of the song, so it works for me in a very. It's a simple. And maybe it's just a simple style of way they wanted to work it, but it works. And it's a really, really nasty song. And, and I also wanted to know that there's some like Slayer vibes in this. I, I found with oh, the yeah. riffs on this. I thought I started hearing like, is that Slayer? It just kind of sounded yeah. a little bit Slayer in the, right the second half of the song. So I thought that was kind of interesting. So I don't know how much how much these guys were following the American scene, if they were at all. But uh, yeah, yeah, just one thing I, I wanted to point out. I was writing in my notes. Uh, a little bit of Slayer vibe going on here. But this is a great song too. But you can't go wrong with this song at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would imagine they would have been right listening yeah. to the American bands. I mean, Slayer had been out for a little bit here. They were already <laughs> on like their third album by this point. Yeah, that's right. I would think. Uh, but yeah, who knows? Um, 
Yeah, I, I, th- I mean, I think you guys sort of <laughs> hit it on that. <laughs> There's not much more I need to uh, need to say on, on this track. I'll just be repetitive. Uh, so then we close it with the final track uh, under the uh, guillotine. Um, Ken, what do you think? Yeah, I like this song too. Um, lyrically, this is probably one of my favorite songs because it sort of talks about the idea of the the idea of like uh, being caught for a crime and then you're going to be uh, taken. The, to the executioner and i love the fact that what i got out of the lyrics for mm-hmm. me in the song is that the person who is being condemned to execution has this kind of pride so they don't want to beg for mercy and the song kind of points that out so i think that's a fantastic way to end the album i love that i love that song a lot mm, cool yeah, no, I think it's another good, uh, uh, another good track. Um, you know, stylistically, I think you know the way it's written is, you know, it, it's sort of the first half's a little bit more mm-hmm. straightforward. Like I think mm-hmm. you kind of listen to it and say, yeah, uh, you know, it's a good song, but you know, a little bit more of the same. But I find it really interesting. The second half really changes, right? There, there's some unexpected, uh, you know, sort of time changes and a few little surprises with with the way the track plays out so i think from a songwriting perspective it's pretty cool uh and once again the guitar leads just shine again uh, on this track i mean millie does a, a great job here um but yeah good a good one uh, uh jim your thoughts oh yeah i mean this is where it all the culmination of the whole album comes together here at like you're finishing it off and it it's done in style i mean it's a really good and i agree with what you guys are saying with the fact that the first part of the album is kind of a little bit more basic and then things start to get a little bit more, I find if, you know, a little bit more technical as the album goes mm. on, um, you know, maybe they planned it this way. Definitely the way they laid out the, uh, the tracks, I think were really, really good on this album, but yeah, this is an evil sounding song, those heavy guitars. And uh, I just, I love it how it kind of just puts a bow on everything, a thrash metal bow on the whole album. It's that good. So, you know, finishes it off in style. Great song. Cool. All right. So we got through uh, those tracks uh, pretty nicely. Um, So, yeah. So just in terms of uh, final thoughts uh, on the album, uh, whether you want to rate it or, you know, you, anything you want to sort of talk about a uh, creator here. Uh, Ken, you want to uh, kick us off? Uh, sure. So, like, if we're going to rate it, I mean, let's be honest, we're all going <laughs> to give it a 10 out of 10. There's just no way <laughs> any of us here are not going to score a 10 out of 10. I, I, I'm, I'm sure that's going to be the point. But regardless... <laughs> Um, yeah, this this album is it to me. It's like I haven't heard it in a while. So when I was spinning it over the weekend, I was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I love this. I love this album to death." It's like it's it's everything you'd want in a thrash metal album. It it you know, has a, intensity, it has speed. It just has this nasty. It's just a nasty album in a lot of ways. Um, but uh, yeah, it's like this is this is a, an achievement for for Millie because although I don't mind endless. It, endless pain I, I there's parts of it i like and there's parts of it i just find it a little on the boring side like it's so it's it's interesting but you can see after the step up from one album for the first yeah. and the second one where they just approved upon the style yeah. right away they do it with panache uh they do it with the, with the riffs the riffing is is intense really and you're right venter venter's a fantastic drummer a good singer and a fantastic mm-hmm. drummer so I mean, he had a really good he had a good lineup with him uh, for the first two three albums. I mean, I know Venter eventually left the band, um, but I mean, you know, his contributions to early Creator have to be noted here. But this is a great this is a fantastic album. Yeah, no, I, I think you could say like with Creator albums, probably going, you know, the first four or f- four or five, like the maturing, like from one album <laughs> to the next, right? Yeah. The songwriting. That's right. uh, the musicianship, like the production, like everything is like a big leap from one to the next, right? I mean, these first, I mean, Pleasure to Kill is a big leap on Endless Pain, but then mm-hmm. what's to come is going to be a, a yeah. big leap uh, from these first two. Uh, and I'm sure we'll get to it in, in our ranking, but 
Yeah, I, I mean, I, I I agree. Like, I think probably we're, I mean, we're, we're all going to love it. I mean, uh, and I think if you're an old school thrash fan, you'll have your membership card taken away if you say you don't like <laughs> the album. But uh, yeah, it's yeah. great. You know, and one of the, you know, This and Endless Pain, like two of my favorite uh, album covers. And, yeah. you know, it, it, it remained one of my favorite creator albums for a while. Uh, and I don't want to give away my my ranking, which is to come. But <laughs> you know, I'll just say, like I later learned to greatly appreciate uh, the more refined sound of uh, Creator that was still to come. But uh, <laughs> I'll leave it there. Um, okay, so uh, coming to the uh, point of the podcast where we're going to rank the uh, album. So uh, I got fifteen albums. I hope you guys got fifteen, right? We do. So let me, before you, yep. before you go, I'm just going to step out for a second, grab my list. I'll be right back. Okay, cool. Just uh, one thing, Billy, like uh, I, I've got the re-release for 2017. So it's really, really cool. And yeah. what's really cool about it is you get Pleasure to Kill on it. Plus you get the EP for uh, yeah. the, the EP they released right after it. So it's pretty neat. And they do it in a kind of a really cool book. That's, it's pretty neat. Tons of liner notes and it's remastered too. So it's, yeah. it's definitely worth the money to pick that up. Yeah, they did a good job, right? They did all the uh, old yeah. albums in that same view, right? Yeah. The, the only thing that bothered me, yeah. I don't even know if I have... Uh, uh, if I have the... No, I don't have... Because I already have two versions of that on vinyl. But uh, yeah. the only thing I don't like... You know, this is just the extreme aggression one, but I, I just don't like it when they write remastered, right? Like, oh, it changes yeah. the yeah. album cover, right? But I agree, Jim. Like, all the yeah, extra yeah. stuff you get in here, like, this extreme aggression one uh, has, like, Live in East Berlin, 1990. Right. Um, so, yeah, these reissues come with, like, a lot of cool uh, extras, but I just don't like that they write... Like, they're messing with the original cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm being picky. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. I would agree with you. Yeah. If, if you're a collector, you want, you, and you're probably a purist, so you yeah. want it to be in the form that it came out originally, right? Yeah. But I do appreciate the, the reissues because all the extras. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, well, you sure. get the extras, of course. Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Uh, so you got your list, uh, Ken? Uh, yes, I do, sir. Okay. Uh, who wants to go first? You want to go first, Ken? Uh, sure, yeah. I'll start it off. So uh, number 15, of course, is going to be uh, Enderama, which, you know, it's an okay album. It's not really a thrash album. It's, I don't know what to call it. Like, I don't know if it's like just straight metal. Um, it's a goth alt rock album. Yeah. Right? Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go. That's a good way of putting it. That's that's fair. I mean, yeah, it's, I mean, I, I don't hate it. I, I'll, I'll listen to it once in the blue moon. But, you know, I mean, I still appreciate the fact that they took the time to, to make it. But it's just not something I would say it's creator. Um, number 14 is going to be Outcast, which is one album that I don't really like at all. I don't like the punk approach to the vocals. Um, it's nothing on that album that's really memorable to me. At all. I, I can't even tell you a song off it right now, to be honest with you. <laughs> I just can't. Mm -hmm. uh, at number uh, 13, I'm putting Hate Uber Alice. Now, I, I did. I know, Jim, you said you like this album. I, I like I this love album it. too. But I, there's parts of it where, it, I don't know, it dipped for me at times. Like, I thought that the opening track was great. It started off like a really great creator song. Then it dips a little bit. And when you get to the last song, which I don't mind the Dying Planet uh, song, <laughs> it's just different. It's like they, you could see they were, I don't know what they were doing here, but it, parts of it I like, and then parts of it I'm sort of, eh, I'm just so, so with. Um, at number 12, I'm putting Cause for Conflict again, another album that I thought was kind of okay, but I don't, I just didn't like the approach to the kind of punky approach to the vocals. And I don't know, I guess Millie was experimenting. So it's obviously he was trying to do something <laughs> different. And it is mid 90s. So <clears throat> I could see that happening. Uh, number 11, I'm putting Renewal. Um, it's funny about this record because a lot of people complain if you read comments, they hate the album cover. I can't stand it. I don't mind the cover. Um, yeah, you might have it there, Billy. Uh, I don't mind the cover, but I it's I don't know. I, something about it that I'm not necessarily liking. It's not really got like metal cover. I don't really know what's going on there. It's yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's it's okay. But I yeah, a lot of people complain about that. They they hate that album cover. They can't stand it. 
I, I got to admit, I'm not a big fan. <laughs> well, okay, <laughs> Me there neither. You go. There you go. And I'm putting Endless Pain at number 10, and I know it's probably a bit blasphemy to do that because it's the first album that they put out. But but I, I kind of like elements of it, but then parts of it bores me. I'm not as enamored with it as I am Pleasure to Kill. Um, number nine, I'm putting Phantom Anti Antichrist, which is an album I did really like. Um, I did enjoy There's a lot of songs on the album that, that, that I still listen to like today. And then at number eight, I'm going to go with Violent Revolution, which is the return to form album after Enderama. Um, I like this album a lot, but the trouble with me is that the strongest song is Violent Revolution. I, it's catchy. It's a song I like the best. There's songs on it that are all right, but, you know, I, I, I still listen to it quite a bit. Uh, then I'm going to put uh, Terrible Certainty at number seven, which is an album that's pretty strong. It's like I hadn't listened to it in a long, long time. So I, had, I was spinning that over the weekend, and I like that album quite a bit. Uh, number six, I'm putting Gods of Violence. Now, this album really, really struck to me because I, I loved I just thought it was catchy. I loved the songs. I thought I thought it was a really good balance of like aggression, melody. It had it all. And I still I still play this album quite often because I it's, it's enjoyable. And then I'm going to go uh, Extreme Aggression at number five. A, again, a classic thrash album um, needs no further introduction, really, when you think about it. And number four, I'm putting Hordes of Chaos. Now, this is an album that I also find really catchy. It's just something about it, like the melody, the aggression, the songs. And I love Millie's vocal approach. He's just like, for some reason, he seemed to, like, he found himself again. I don't know. It's like, he's a really good vocalist. And he's actually mm. um, really impassioned on this album, at least I think. So I love that album. And then my last three, now we're getting into Enemy of God, which I rank high because, again, I love this album too. I love his vocals. I love the the guitars. Uh, it's an album I play a lot. I still play it all the time because it's just it's it's perfect for me. And number two, I'm putting Pleasure to Kill. It should be number number one, but I'm having a hard time with my number one, which is Coma of Souls. Mm -hmm. I like both these two albums equally. Uh, Coma of Souls, I I like a lot, but I'm I mean maybe tomorrow I could change it and go Pleasure to Kill then Coma of Souls. But that's that's my ranking. All right, cool. Um, maybe I'll go, and then you can go, sure. Jim. Um, so uh, my bottom four is what. Uh, excuse me, I'm going to call <laughs> the uh, the experimental uh, period, uh, yeah. or AKA my worst nightmare. But that's a personal thing. <laughs> but you know, like I don't. I mean, these albums just didn't uh, work for me. Uh, I didn't like them. I'm sure other people. Uh, may like them, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, just not for me. Um, so my number 15 is Enderama and 14 is Outcast. Uh, again, I, I, you know, I, I think it's like goth, uh, old rock, a bit of industrial in there. I mean, yeah. Millie's vocals are unrecognizable. I mean, yeah. this stuff borders on rock music. Um, yeah, there's just the, the core creator sounds just not there. Like this is not the band uh, I discovered or that I grew up with uh, through the 80s uh, and the very early 90s. So again, you know, the band has the right to sort of experiment. So um, that's cool. Um, then for me, 13 is renewal. Uh, number 12 is uh, cause of conflict. Um, yeah, and again, renewal, right? Right? Like for me, this thing was like it was a shocker, right? There's two yeah. albums I remember rushing home and putting on. Uh, there's Metallica's Black album, uh, yeah. and there's Creators Renewal, uh, <laughs> and the two of them just they just shocked me, right? It's just not <laughs> what I expected and not what I wanted to hear. Um, you know, like like I like these two albums better than the, my fourteen and fifteen. Uh, I think they're a little heavier. They're definitely mm -hmm. heavier. You know, cause for conflict is the heaviest of these four. Um, but yeah, just n not my creator. Uh, but again, uh, all, you know, for folks who like it, that that's great. Um, so moving to number 11, uh, I have, uh, hate Uber Alice. Uh, so of course the, uh, the latest, uh, uh album and, uh, you know, uh, more of the same of the last couple, like thrashy, mm -hmm. but, you know, still very, uh, melodic.
melodic, just, you know, good modern creator. Um, but, but I do feel like it's a slight step down from the previous couple. Um, yeah. So I kind of have it up here at 11. Like, you know, a, a part of me feels that maybe it's time for creator to do a little shift uh or something a little different with the next one but uh let's not let, let's not have it back to goth metal though uh <laughs> and number 10 gods of violence so just a great thrash album uh again like the later era it's still melodic uh this has really good production this thing sounds great uh i'm a big fan uh phantom antichrist for me number nine uh very thrashy um you know this and and uh, uh, Hey Do Borales, very melodic, but but I like this one much better. Uh, obviously, I've got it ranked uh, higher here. Just lots of good hooks. It's catchy. Uh, just a damn good uh, creator album. Uh, number eight, Hordes of Chaos. Um, uh, again, just another late era, strong late era thrash band. Uh, interesting for me on this one. Th this actually sounds like uh, 80s creator, uh, but with a more modern uh, production and you know, I think uh, you said this Ken, uh, Millie singing is quite good uh, yeah. on this one uh, so I agree with you and then Endless Pain I I've got here coming in at number 7 I, I don't know maybe uh, maybe I, I put this too high um, but just you know the debut uh, the debut album the, the album <laughs> cover you know has the great track Flag of Hate you know, a staple of the live show and it kind of started at all so maybe n nostalgia for me is pushing it higher than it should uh but i agree with you ken it doesn't belong anywhere near uh the top five or six uh you yeah. know maybe it uh, number six for me, Violent Revolution. Um, and so I don't know if it's just like, I think this is a good album or is it just, I was so happy to get the old creator back. That <laughs> so I, but I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure it's because it's a good album. Uh, yeah. You know, like I, for me, this should have come after Coma of Souls. Uh, oh, yes, yes, yeah. Uh, and, and you know, after the the previous four albums, we're actually getting Millie's signature vocals back. So, um, so again, I think that's pretty cool. And it's kind of interesting that the album artwork kind of pays tribute to Coma of Souls, right? You've got that same yeah. kind of yep. logo, so kind of going backwards, right? So, and that's mm -hmm. what the music was doing. So that's cool. Uh, Enemy of God uh, is my uh, number five. Um, Definitely the best of the uh, later uh, creator uh, material, just vicious thrash, uh, <laughs> no nonsense. It, there's less melody relative to the, the stuff that would come after this one. I mean, the uh, creator is in fine, uh, fine form here. Uh, for me, Coma of Souls uh mm -hmm. i've got it number four um yeah the top four are, are all so good for me like it's really hard my number one is hands down slam dunk uh but these these said number two three and four is tough for me just mm -hmm. you know a, a good lesson in in thrash songwriting uh you just we talked about it before the band just continues to mature and then you know i i've said i'm a huge sodom fan so creator uh you know, Sodom's Frank Blackfire uh, is on guitar on this album. So uh, his uh, his impact can't be understated there. Mm -hmm. um, number four for me, Terrible Certainty. Uh, again, uh, you know, uh, just a, a massive leap forward <laughs> relative to the first two uh, first two records. Uh, you know, just a pure thrash uh, album. Uh, Gone is the, uh, you know, from the first two albums, the, the bordering on death and, uh, you know, death music and uh, the, the raw aggression is, it's still aggressive but like that raw sound is, is is gone it's much more mature number two pleasure to kill we already talked about that uh, and my number one uh hands down uh extreme aggression like oh, I, I just okay. love this album uh i mean it has the, the best of the old uh 
what was of the new uh like i still remember uh listening to this thing for the first time the hooks the catchy songwriting uh, everything came together uh and it was interesting this was a major label uh for a creator at the time on epic records in north america so that was, uh, I think, pretty good. And that's why if you look at this album, I'm sure folks know, but the original album cover looked amazing. Uh, it was like a real mm -hmm. like, like violin type album cover. Yeah. Uh, and then I I'm guessing it's because it was on Epic Records uh, that, you know, I still have the record here that we kind of get like uh, a portrait. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty. Yeah, it's pretty lame. <laughs> Right, compared to what should have been there, but uh, yeah. nevertheless, uh, best creator album, in my opinion. Okay, cool. Uh, so, Jim, over to you. Yeah, mine, I kind of a conglomeration of both your lists, but number 15, Renewal, the breeze through these ones, number 14, Outcast, 13, Endorama, and those could be intertwined, it, it doesn't really matter. Number 12, Cause for Conflict, number 11, Violent. Uh, Revelation, Revolution, uh, number 10, Enemy of the God, Enemy of God. And I mean, I, that title track is amazing on that album. I love it. It's just placement um, that could be higher. <clears throat> number nine, Phantom Antichrist, Death to the World, a wicked, wicked track off that album. Absolutely love it. I go a little higher with Hate Uber Alice. I love that album. Okay. I think in 2022, that was my number three pick. Uh, yeah. for my top albums and I just love it I love uh, the title mm -hmm. track and Midnight Sun where they do the uh, you know they have the female like uh, oh, yeah, uh, singer yeah. on there as well and the video is really cool with the chainsaws on bungee cords and stuff it's it's really cool it's got a really weird sound to it and I, it didn't get a ton of love but I really really like it uh, number seven uh, Endless Pain you know Total Death is amazing on that song uh, number six Gotta go with Hordes of Chaos. That is is one of my favorite thrash albums. I love it. Uh, you know, War Curse on that is a wicked, wicked song. Yeah. And of course, the title track is cool. But that's a really, really good album. And kind of hard to get to. It's um, I don't think they've remastered or re-released that one. And it's because it's I mean it's only two thousand and nine. But uh, to try to get it, you're, you're it's pretty expensive to get uh, used or whatever. Number five, Terrible Certainty. You know, Toxic Trace is good off that. Great album. Number four, Gods of Violence. You know, I, 2017, a little bit higher. But, I mean, that uh, Satan is Real on that is a great song. And Fallen Brothers is pretty cool on that, too. Uh, nice. Number three, Home of Souls. Uh, you know, The Sun Burns Red. I mean, this is a, an awesome, awesome album. Um, you know, and it comes only behind Pleasure to Kill, you know, which we just discussed in length. And I mean, my number one, just like Billy, Extreme Aggression. This was the oh, first cool. creator album I bought. Um, so I have a little bit of attachment there. And I remember, I mean, I, I knew about Pleasure to Kill, but I, I don't think I had that one. I went back and bought them. But yeah, this was just an amazing, amazing album. I absolutely love it. Uh, you know, some pain will cast on it. That's a wicked, wicked track. And uh, so, so there it is in a nutshell, the top 15. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. I mean, not, not, not drastically different. <laughs> no. Uh, or like, you know, what's in our top fives are similar, but yeah. yeah. Speak, but. All right, cool. Um, so before we leave Creator, just maybe uh, do one quick sort of uh, round table here on final thoughts on the band. Any last words? Uh, Jim, you want to go? Uh, yeah, just a cool factoid, you know, pleasure to kill. Hey, Varg from Mayhem Burzum, after he killed Euronymous, mm -hmm. changed out of his clothes in a car, and the only yeah. shirt in the back seat was this album cover shirt, so he wore that, so kind of an interesting factoid no i mean i i love creator creator and i love the teutonic four i mean they're they're amazing and uh uh like what you guys said sometimes i like them a little bit better than maybe the, the uh, you know the big four from the u.s uh for different reasons i mean it's just they seem to be gaining a lot of momentum mm -hmm. and they all seem to be putting out really really good quality releases so awesome no awesome all the way around yeah cool um 
Yeah, I, I kind of had similar, you know, similar thoughts. I mean, I, I think this band deserves uh, a lot of respect. Uh, I mean, just a huge like career, and you know, sure, I don't like a couple albums, but for the most part, uh, th these are all fantastic stuff. I mean, even if you just go like the last, I don't know, say last twenty years, yeah. um, like these, I mean, nobody's released uh, of the of the the U.S. Big Four. I mean, nobody's released the the amount of albums or, or albums that are as consistent as Creator has, um, or. or or even the 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 German Big Four, right? It yeah, has, has matched what they're doing. I mean, this is a thrash podcast, so from a thrash perspective, I mean, they're they're you know they're still remain like true to their roots. Um, you know, you can't say that like about <laughs> uh, point, <laughs> point some of the big US four, uh, <laughs> but uh, and, and they're touring machines. Um, you know, I think I mentioned I saw them three times uh, last year, and I wasn't even going out of my way. Uh, I mean, <laughs> these guys are on like every tour. They don't mind opening for bands that I say, "Wow, why the hell are they opening for them?" Uh, but then you'll you'll hear the show; they're awesome, and they'll be like, "Yeah, and we're coming back in four months on our on our own tour." Uh, <laughs> they do all the festivals, and so and there's just no signs of slowing down, right? So uh, again, just kudos to this band right there uh i mean when you when you've got slayer of called it quits although they're popping back up again uh there's no sign of uh creator slowing down and, and you'll also see uh <laughs> you know and to ensure that's the case like i'll follow millie like on instagram and like he's traveling the road and it's the same thing with um Oh, his name escapes me. Uh, what is it? Schwimmer from uh, Destruction. Like, yeah, they're, yeah. they're always taking pictures of themselves in the gym, lifting <laughs> weights. Like, these guys are, like, taking it seriously, man. They're, right. they're taking fitness and their health seriously to keep going. So I think that's pretty cool, too. Um, but, yeah, Ken, uh, any final thoughts on your side? Yeah, so Millie, I, I really respect Millie as a musician um, because he, I think Crater we're looking at their, their, you know, their history and, and the, the amount of the, all 15 albums that they've released. Yeah. There is a bit of diversity there. So I kind of, sometimes I know there are thrash fans who get upset that, Oh, they had this mid nineties drop, but I kind of, again, I'm going to go back to my thought that they use like, yeah. Okay. They did a lot of experimentation in, in, in that, in that area of music. Cause you know, you had grunge, you had, Metal was, or thrash was pretty much on the downside. But he used that time to experiment. And then some of that experimentation has now found its way back into the modern sound of creator, which is what I, I kind of like. So that's why my rankings, I got a lot of the modern stuff towards the, the front because I, I find it entertaining. Oh, well, entertaining, but, but I find it enjoyable. And I find myself going back to those albums for some reason, more so, because I think the modern production, the sound, uh, the the melody, the aggression, they've learned how to balance it. I, I do agree with you though, Billy, that the next album, please, you gotta start changing it up a little bit because it's starting to, after Hey, Do, hey Do Uber Alice, it's like, yeah, a great cover. I, I thought it was an awesome cover and mm -hmm. some good songs, but they need to, I, I think he needs to vary it up a little bit, come up with a different idea but I guess it's hard when you've been doing this for so many years to, yeah, yeah. like you, yeah, how many yeah. riffs can a person play or, or like create? Like you, it's just, it's natural to happen. Like if you look at the new Judas Priest song that came out, like I see people saying, oh, I heard this song sounds like that song. And it's like, yeah, because after a while you can only come up with so many unique riffs, but uh, I do enjoy the riffs. I, I think, you know, Pleasure to Kill is one of those albums where it's just riff centric riff mini it's, it's maniacal really when you think about it but uh yeah i do appreciate creator and i think they're one of the more consistent thrash bands and they still are and that's important like i think you should care about your music don't end up becoming metallica where you're like these old geezers who just i don't know i'm not too sure what the hell they're trying to achieve these days but at least you won't get that from creator yeah, yeah. no well said um, so yeah, I think this might, uh, uh, bring us to the end of our first episode of, uh, of the thrash cast. 
Uh, you know, I, I think all three of us want to thank everyone who's going to be uh, tuning in and listening <laughs> to us. Uh, yeah. And of course, thanks to uh, uh, my co-host today, Jim and Ken. Uh, we're going to alternate this, so you won't have to listen to me uh, lead this <laughs> thing every time. So, um, so that'll be cool. Uh, I think we got a great album uh, coming up next, uh, Sacred Reich, The American Way. Uh, and what guys keep me honest what's that 1990 i think i believe so yeah yeah 1990 yeah that's right yeah yeah, yeah recorded okay. in 89 came out in 90 yeah okay it was a pretty big break for those guys then right because oh, uh yeah. Grinch was like 87 maybe or 88 so well, I, I think they did the ep beforehand uh, oh, Surf Surf Nicaragua. Nicaragua. remember that that, that was yeah. kind of like yeah. the, that kind of was the prelude to what you got with um the american way yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, okay, so yeah, another great album. Um, and yeah, once again, uh, thanks to everybody. Uh, really appreciate folks taking the time uh, to tune in, and uh, we'll see you all uh, next week. Absolutely. Absolutely.